I remember when I was getting ready to leave North Carolina, my father looked at me and said, son, he said, going to the city, you might have a fine car, you might find a, a fine home, you might wear the best of clothes, but I want you to know that only the righteous shall see God.
chapter, verses 15 through 20 responses.
19 verse. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory and be strengthened with might by his spirit in the enemy, yes. that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is that breath and length and death and height, and to know the love of Christ, yes. which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God yes. is already blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
that to me. All we have to do is take it to me. Forfeit means I give up my right to it. That's right. It means I'm disqualified. It means right. that I shouldn't have it anymore, but all I have to do is take it to you. Take it to you. saying let it go. Just the last verse. The words that he said. He said everything to the Lord in prayer. The word everything means don't leave anything out. That's right. That's right. That's right. Give it Take it all. Don't hold on to any piece of it. That's right. Give it all. Pray with me, Father. We are grateful that you are our God. We are grateful that we belong to you. We are grateful that you are here our humble cries, our feeble prayers, that you need us right where we are. Thank you, Lord, that it doesn't matter the day, the time of the day or night, but we can always call upon the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that all we have to do is speak that name. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the promise that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, you know the weakness of your servant
saying, so in the Word of God, both in the Old and the New Testament, there is a constant, repeated command to pray. You're going to struggle with this. It's not going to be natural to you. Your inclination is to, going to be to do something else. That's right. That's right. You have to pray. And the thing about the hymn that we just sang, and that I, I truly am grateful for, I have a God that I can take my griefs to. But now the question comes, what if I don't have grief? What if I don't have a test that I need to pass? What if I have, I'm able to take care of my bills already? What happens if I'm already in good health? Where does my reason to pray come from? And the truth is, is that when we don't have a test that we need to pass, or we're not being bullied, or uh, we believe, it seems like we have everything under control. We have struggled with this whole concept of prayer. Why do I need to pray if everything is okay? One of and. The, the text that the Lord uh, led us to today is in the book of Ephesians. Yes. And when you look at the book of Ephesians, there's something really interesting about this book. Paul doesn't give any instructions to the book, I mean to the church at Ephesus until chapter 4. Yeah. So now get this. That he opens up chapter 4 and says something like, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy. And he, he starts in chapter 4, he starts to give commands. And in chapter 5, you know, we find out you know, he gives instructions to husbands and wives. And, and, and in chapter 6, we have the armor of God and do this one and do this and do that. But before he gets to talking about the life of the believer. That's right. There he spends an entire three chapters. He spends half the book right. on something else. Right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, Before we get to living, well, there's right. something important, yes, something sir. that we have to skip over. That if we are going to live successfully, if yes. we're going to be victorious, if we're going to be conquerors, yes. then we need those first three chapters. Yes. And I, I won't labor it too long, but and, and the way that the Lord unraveled it to me in chapter one, there is a focus on enlightenment. In chapter two, there is a, a focus on the engagement of God. And then in chapter three, there is the enablement. So in chapter one, the enlightenment of the same. In chapter 2, the engagement with the same. And in chapter 3, the enablement of the same. And we're going to land in chapter 3, but just first to chapter 1. If you would open up your Bibles with me, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1. It was read in your hearing. And uh, if you need a title. Uh, the Lord really spoke to me about prayers that don't leave me empty. Prayers that don't leave me empty. Because the truth is, I've gotten on my knees sometimes. And I've gotten back up the exact same way. The truth is, I've gotten on my knees sometimes, and when I get up, I'm not sure if God heard me or not. How do we get away from prayers that leave us in prayers that I don't even really know why I prayed in the first place. Okay, God is gracious, God is good, and uh, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. When we start to get into these rituals, but 
there is a reason All right. for why we need to pray. All right, uh, and, and in Ephesians uh, 3.14, yes, Paul said, for this reason I bow. Yes. 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 And so we want to take a really quick look. Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 18. Well, we could back up. And 15 said, After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Yes. That the God, verse 17, of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in yes. the hours of Him. And for those of you who weren't involved, uh, Pastor Washington uh, preached that. Oh, all right. Yes, he did. Yes, so I'm, yes. I'm going to jump over 17 and jump straight to 18 and 19. When we look at why we need to pray, whether I'm rich or I'm poor, whether I'm sick or I'm in good health, whether everybody likes me or nobody likes me, what are some of the reasons? Why am I praying in the first place? Verse 18, uh, and th this is the, the first prayer. He says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Here it is, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to yes, us who yes. believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Yes. So I know that was a mouthful, so let's say it again. Why should we pray? Number one, we should pray because of hope. Yes. We should pray because of hope. Jeremiah in one place said, This I will call to my mind, therefore I have hope. What kind of hope is it? One scripture called it a better hope. Yeah. One scripture called it a lively hope. Yeah. But what exactly is this hope? Now, one of the scripture described this hope as the anchor of our soul. Yeah. Yeah. What is this hope? Why is hope so important? Why should I be excited about it? It is the hope right. of his call. Yeah. Now you got to do that. It is hope that comes because of his call. It is hope that comes because God spoke. Now that's what the call means. If my child is down the street and I call their name, Catherine, Catherine, it is the hope. It means that God is speaking, but it's not just that God is speaking, it's that God is speaking to me. And it's not just that God is speaking to me, but it's that he's calling me by name. And the thing is that it's not just that he's calling me by name. It's, it's not a command. It's an invitation. He's calling me to come to himself. Moses, Moses, come over here. Samuel, Samuel, stop laying down. Get Jeremiah, come. He is a call. It is an invitation. It's because I have hope. It is a, a hope that I, I didn't have before, but I have it now because God has spoken my name. Well, what really is wrapped up in that? Well, because he's called my name, what has he called me to? He's called me to salvation. He said, Brow, here, come here. Why am I calling you? I'm calling you because I want to save you. Because I want to deliver you. Uh, uh, Paul, come on, Paul, what are you doing? Well, I, I'm calling you because I want to use you. Why should I pray? I should pray because God has called my name. And that gives me hope. He didn't have to call my name. of the hope of his calling, the yes. hope mm -hmm. of eternal life. Yes. 
But then not only that, look what does it say next? That he may know not only what the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So first I could pray because I have hope. But then I can also pray because I have help. The text said that God is rich. How, how rich is God? You know, if we had to think about how rich Oprah Winfrey was, how rich Bill Gates is, or uh, how rich the, the guy who owns Amazon is, or Walmart, all those guys, the riches of God exceed the riches of everyone who knows or can ever think of. Well, how rich is he? Well, I, I read in one place that uh, he owns the cattle on the top. He said, the beast of the forest are mine. I read in another thing, he said, the gold is mine. The silver is mine. But then, if it wasn't enough for what he had, look at who God knows. You know, sometimes you say, well, I, I know that I've made it to this status because I know this person. There's a scripture where God says, I know the fowl of the air. I know the beast of the forest. But then, if, if, if that weren't enough, it, 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 just in case you thought he wasn't rich enough, God said, if I were hungry, I would tell you. David said, the earth is the Lord. If you want to know about my power, 
when we think about why we pray, we are praying because of hope. And see, the, 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 the thing about enlightenment, here's the thing. It means that before enlightenment, you're in the dark. It means that your eyes were closed. So wait a minute. Maybe we haven't been praying because our eyes have been closed to hope. Hey, Paul said, here's my prayer. I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, I want your eyes to open up. We have hope. I want your eyes to open up. We have help. God is rich. Needless pain. You don't have to bear that. You don't have to walk around without peace. You can have peace. And don't worry, you have the highest. <laughs> that means it doesn't matter what the doctor said. It doesn't matter what the judge said. It doesn't matter what the government said. It doesn't matter what the teacher said. What the geologist or the commander or the governor. You make whatever it is. There's somebody higher. In chapter 2, let me just pull three quick things. In chapter 2, verse 1, he says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. How did he engage me? He engaged me when I was dead. He engaged me when I was dead. Yes, yes. The problem with the world is that we live in a matrix. We live and we think we're alive. We think we're free. We think that everything is okay. But we're actually dead. Wait a minute, I'm taking care of my family, but... You're dead. Uh -huh. you, I, I, I'm taking care. I'm making a name for myself. Dead. dead. I, I, I'm making sure that I work out. I'm, I'm in good health. Dead. dead. Uh, Everybody likes me. You, you should see how many followers I had. Uh, dead. dead. Uh, but the thing is that, see, once my eyes start to open up, uh -huh. Paul says, understand this. God engaged you while you were dead. That's right. That's right. And this is what he did. He made you alive. He made you alive. He made you alive. So it's okay. And we, we can certainly say, now let the weak say, I am strong. Him. Yeah. I, I can reach him. If you can imagine a woman who 
touched the hem of his garment. I, I was far, but now I, I, I'm close. And she used to think about that, that closeness. Not only was I alienated from God, I was alienated from God's people. But then I'm not only alienated from God and alienated from God's people, I was alienated from God's promises. The event was far off. Forgiveness, far off. Peace in my home, far off. Peace in my mind, far off. But now, because of Christ, now in Christ, that was my condition. But now look at my condition. I can touch the promise. But he engaged me not only when I was dead, not only when I was distant, uh -huh. but also when I was disconnected. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. God wasn't satisfied doing something and then leaving me alone. Uh -huh. right. Right. I'm connected. Uh -huh. So that now when I pray, and, and, and we can jump over to Ephesians um, 3 mm -hmm. and 14. He said, I bow my knees to the Father. I, I, I could, you know, Paul could have said a lot of things, and, you know, he could have done it in Hebrew and said, I, I pray to El Elyon. Mm -hmm. I pray to El Shaddai, the Almighty God. You know, I pray, and he could have put all these big, grandiose names. He says, but now I'm connected. Here. Here. He engaged me, and now, now I can say, Father. Yes. I, I, I can pray, yes. Father. Here. Father. Here. And so here we are going to go through just a really quick word. For <laughs> so this cause, I bow my knees. I know that we have the scripture, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes. And based on the things that we just said, we certainly can come boldly. That yes. makes us like, all right, come on, let's pray. All right. All right. But boldly doesn't negate bowing. Boldly doesn't negate bowing. A child doesn't walk into the room and say, give me this. A child has to come. They can come. They can ask for that piece of candy or that piece of money or that toy. But they have to come bowing. They have to come with humility. And in 2 Corinthians 714, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. If we don't humble ourselves, there's no need to pray. There's no need to pray if we're not coming, bowing. Paul said, I bow my knees unto the Father. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I love everything in this passage is so connected. The Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you. And, and here now we're getting to the, 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 the change, uh, the, the model that we want to look at for prayer. When we think about prayers in the scriptures, mm -hmm. how many of us can think of a verse where Paul said, I'm praying that the Lord is going to give you that house. Mm -hmm. I'm praying that the Lord is going to give you that man or that woman. I'm praying that God is going to let you pass that test. All right. All right. All right. Mm. Now, and certainly, understand. I mean, there, there are lots of things I'm saying. The people he was writing to, they were people just like us. They were, they did, they were getting married. They did go to school. They did have bills to pay. They did have. There are all these things, and certainly we do want to take everything. 
But especially in our culture, we focus so much on yeah. the outer man yeah. on the outside yeah. that we forget the things of chapter one and chapter two. Yeah. We, we pray so much about all those other things and we forget the reason why Christ died. <laughs> and so when we look that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, and, and certainly our, our revival talked about that. Uh -huh. According to the riches yeah, of his glory. Uh, yes, so before we talk about the riches of his love, but here when it talks about his glory, the word uh, behind that doctor means his weight. Uh -huh. I don't know who he is. Yeah. Not according to what he owns. Not according to who he knows. But according to who he is. The abundance. The overflow. The outpouring of who he is. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So he says the first thing that he prays for is strength. The word strengthen, it, it means to empower. Yes. Yeah. When was the last time you prayed for power? Well, say it again. Mm. When Three. was the last time yeah, yeah. you prayed for strength? Well, mm. strengthen, what that means is that there's strength I don't have yet. Right. But it also means that there is strength that I can have. All right, I say that again. Mm -hmm. He says, I pray that he will strengthen it. You may not have the power right now. Right. 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 But you can right. have the power. Right. And the, the thing, and again, that he prays, look at this prayer. He says, strengthen with power. You know, when we pray for people, you know, we pray for a lot of different things. Lord, please help them to be more nice. Uh, Lord, please, you know, let them have a, a little bit of compassion. Uh, Lord, let them uh, do this or do that. But he says, I'm praying for power. I'm praying for dunamis. And Deacon Herbert was back here preaching with me. That word dunamis, that is where we get the word dynamite from. About strength. Yeah. We think about going to the gym and we think about muscles. He said, I'm not talking about muscles. I'm praying for an explosion. I'm not struggling on the inside. 
That's right. So that if God spares me, it's okay. But King, if you need to, go ahead and throw me in the fire. That you, it, it is power in the inner man that you may threaten my prayer life, but you know what? I'm going to pray three times a day anyway. That's right. Give me to the line. That's right. He said, this, this, this is what I'm, I'm praying. Are, are we praying like Paul? Are we praying for strength in the inner man by the Spirit? And when, when I was first looking at this text, I honestly was looking at it like a bulleted list. Yes, um, in other words, all right, I need this and this and this and this. But when you look at the Greek, it is a progression. Uh -huh. And the reason why that's important is because you can't get the last thing. You can't check that off if you skip over the that's first right. thing. That's right. Uh -huh. that's right. A lot of us would like to just jump to Ephesians chapters 4 through 6 and just tell people what they need to do. But there is an order. And, then, and look at the order in this text. He says, my first prayer is for strength by the Spirit. And the second thing that he says is that if you have strength in the Spirit, the outcome of that is the stain of the sun. Look at what it says. Where is it? That Christ, verse 17, may dwell in your heart by faith. That Christ may dwell. That Christ, how do you know the Lord loves you? Because he stays with you. There are plenty of people that I don't live with. That's right. I'll do something for you, but I'm not moving in with you. <laughs> Tell the truth. Say no doubt. That Christ may dwell. Well, yes. So wait a minute. I've been wanting Christ to dwell, but I wasn't being strengthened by the Spirit. Uh, <laughs> we need the strength of the Spirit. How do we get the strength of the Spirit? I'm glad you asked. We have to read the Word of God. And we have to do the Word of God. If we read the Word and do the Word, that's how the Spirit gives us strength. If we go to the gym and we have a trainer and the trainer says, do this many reps, the trainer is there, the equipment is there. Uh -huh. But until we actually do what the trainer says, we're not going to get the strength that the trainer wants us to have. We have to be strengthened by the Spirit, obedient to the Spirit. And he says, if you're listening to my Spirit, then that's the place I want to be. He says, I'm praying that Christ will dwell in your heart. And we're going to keep going, he says, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Yeah, yeah. Rooted and grounded. So not only is the spirit going to strengthen, not only is the son going to stay, but now I am steadfast in love. Yeah. If I had to ask what you're rooted in this morning, what are the grounds for what you're doing? And see, the thing is, is that if I'm rooted in this now, it means that some other stuff had to be uprooted. It means my selfishness had to be uprooted. My meanness had to be uprooted. My, my self-centeredness had to be uprooted. He says, being rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all sense what is the bread and length, yes. and depth, yes. and height. Yes. He said this, I, his prayer came to him, he says, if these things happen, I, I want you, my prayer is that you would understand something. I, I, I want you yes. to understand God's love. Yes. I want you to know yes. how big it is, how, yes. how deep yes. it is. Yes. And there was a verse.
Job chapter 11, verse 7. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto your perfection? Listen, and this is Zophar speaking. Listen to what he says, verse 8. It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? It is deeper than hell. What canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. In other words, when he says it is, is deeper than hell, it doesn't matter how low you go. I want you to know that it doesn't matter the depths of your discouragement, the depths of your despair. It doesn't matter the depths of your spent, of your sin. God can reach you right where you are. But it's not just deep, it's high. Because what happens is that not only does it reach you where you are, but it lifts you up to where he is. So that the things that you didn't have, now you have in him. But it's not just high, not only does he elevate, it's long. What is it longer than in that passage it says it's longer than the earth? But in other words, it's from everlasting to everlasting. Wait a minute, how long is that? Well, what that means is that you cannot stop the love of God. I, I know that you messed up, but you can't stop the love of God. I, I know that you did wrong, but you can't stop God loving you. I know that you did it again, but you can't stop it. And the one that, that really messes us up is how wide it is. Yeah. I want you to know how wide God's love is. Yeah. In Revelation, we find every tribe, yeah. every nation. Yeah. I want you to understand how wide it is. God's love reaches to the murderer. God's love, come on, Paul. God's love reaches to the adulterer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reaches to the sexual offender. It reaches to the thief. It reaches to the liar. It reaches yeah. to the backbiter. It reaches to the gossiper. It reaches to the hater. It reaches to the, the, the sinner. It, it just reaches everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. He says, I want you to know yeah. that love. And then Paul did something which I've never seen before. Uh, look at, let me get back to Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, third chapter. After he says verse 18, look at what he says in verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. So I, I think that it, it, it hits you that the way that it hit me the first time. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. What does that mean? If it passes knowledge, hold on, wait a minute. So, hold on, so there's knowledge. That, that means that there's something I can know. He says, but it passes knowledge. I want you to know it, it goes beyond what you can know. Verse 18, but I know that God isn't going to answer that. I just prayed that you would understand, but the truth is, you can't understand. It is beyond, it is beyond understanding. It doesn't make sense. It, 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 it is unfair. It, it is love that, wait a minute, God, you're going to forgive that? Wait a minute, God, you're, you're, you're going to restore after that? Wait a minute. You're still going to allow him to be king? Wait a minute. You're going to allow him to keep their family? Wait a minute. They're gambling the word and they're going to restore all their finances? Wait a minute. You, they did this, but it doesn't make sense. In chapter 1, his power was incomparable. But here, his love is incomprehensible. I, I, I know that we're never going to reach it, but we're going to reach anyway. Yeah. 
more love, more love. The love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' songs. And see, here's the thing we're at to close. When we're strengthened by the Spirit, when the sun stays, when we're steadfast in love, even though we can only understand an inkling of it, then the end of verse 19 says, that ye may be found, I'm, I'm sorry, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. for fullness, but I didn't pray for the Spirit. I, I didn't pray for the strength of the Spirit. I, I wanted fullness. And, and see, think about our prayers. We pray for fullness without being filled. I can't remember the place right now, but there's a place he says, be filled with the Spirit. And here we have the progression that if we are strengthened by the Spirit, yes. if the Son stays, if we are steadfast in, in love, love, because Christ brought love with him, yes. he, came to stay. Yes. he says then, yes. the result of all that is that you are going to be full yes. with the fullness of God. Oh, no. And I, that, that, it, it really is nothing else to say. Why? I, I can be full because now I'm full of Him. I'm gone. Or, or put it another way, Paul said, I am crucified. I, I'm complete because I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet, not I, but Christ lives in me. I'm complete because now I'm I'm living by faith. I, I'm complete because I, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God who loves me. And then I'm complete now because I have peace with Him. By faith, I have peace with Him. Because I believe Him, I, I'm complete. I have peace with God. And because I have peace with Him, I have peace in Him. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you. That in me. Stop going outside of me. In me. In me. If you want peace, peace isn't going to be in that taco or in that chicken leg or in that movie or in that bottle or in that, in that bank account. The, the peace that you need is in me.
Lord, and not so that we can do what we want to do, but strength so that we can do your will. In the name of Jesus, help us to pray for the end of the of Christ. Lord, help us to believe your son. Help us to believe your word. So that Christ will want to stay, so that he'll want to walk with us, to talk with us. Tell us that we want to for our fullness, our completeness in you. And Lord, 